Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Lieutenant Rice, Officer Miller, and Officer Nero failed to establish probable cause for Mr. Gray's arrest as no crime had been committed by Mr. Gray. Accordingly, Lieutenant Rice, Officer Miller, and Officer Nero illegally arrested Mr. Gray. Upon arrival of the transport wagon driven by Officer Caesar Goodson, Lieutenant Rice, Officer Nero, and Officer Miller loaded Mr. Gray into the wagon and at no point was he secured by a seatbelt while in the wagon, contrary to a BPD general order. Well, there it is. The treasure of love brought to us by Barack Hussein Obama. The man who was always wanted to bring it all down, man. And is it coming down? Could you imagine a street rat one of the worst people in the history of the United States of America, Al Sharpton, demanding a federal police force. Can you imagine that you would live in America where a street rat who should have been arrested, in my opinion, 20 years ago for the Freddie Fashions Mart fire, for the Tawana Brawley hoax? Can you imagine this street rat is in and out of the White House on a regular basis? I've said to you many times that Barack Obama is a communist revolutionary. The day he became president, I referred to the movie Burn with Marlon Brando. I don't know if you know that film. It's a very famous film. And what we're seeing in America now is a repeat of history. We have an overt revolution going on. It's being steamed up by Obama, by Holder when he was in charge. The whole pack of them stirred up the masses. That does not release the cops involved in this case from any culpability in the death of this character, great. And I have to go into it from both sides. I mean, I have to be Solomon-esque on this. The fact of the matter is, being a policeman today is the most impossible job in the United States of America. There's no question in my mind it's an impossible job. What this case is going to do is make an already difficult job impossible to do. The insanity is overwhelming. And I have an officer who wrote me this. He will remain anonymous. He said, what's going, and this is a very intelligent officer who is a college graduate, a third generation officer, as good as gold. And he said, America is following the exact route that Germany did pre-Hitler. And he visited Germany a few years ago. He saw what had happened to the police there. One community uproar already happened to pol police rel relegated to no power currently. Next comes the charismatic leader who gives the police the power back. And then what happens is there's a corruption of power after the leader earns the respect of the police and the military and slowly makes the police corruption acceptable. And the police are on board with this because initially they're allowed to keep their job, as happened, and then they're turned into the SS. They want to federalize all local, local agencies managed by who? Al Sharpton? <clears throat> We're having a revolution. Now, what actually happened in the van is the question. You heard the case. You know the case. You can comment on the case. You probably all want to hear what I have to say about it, or else you wouldn't be listening to the show. I'm sure many of you made up your own minds. You know what happened in your mind. Now, Freddie Gray has a rap sheet as long as my right arm. Does that mean he was guilty when he was arrested? I don't know. Even if you have a rap sheet as long as an arm, it doesn't mean that you're guilty of a crime if you didn't commit it. So let's start with that. You are presumed innocent in America. So why was he arrested is the question. It goes back to the, 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 the origin of the case. Why was this character arrested, number one? Then now let's look at the, the DA. They call her a city prosecutor, state attorney, Marilyn Mosby. First of all, she comes from a family of police. I, did, I didn't know that. That's interesting. But that doesn't mean that she's in favor of the police. She's as aggressive and as... Uh, let us say, ambitious as Michelle Obama. In fact, I'll make a prediction that State Attorney Marilyn Mosby runs for, federal, for state office, excuse me, national office. She could easily run for the U.S. Senate or House of Representatives after this because she's made a name for herself, whatever that name may, may be. But the questions remain after the charges presented against the officers. And here are some of the questions. 
Do you remember the St. Louis County prosecutor, Bob McCulloch, who was told to recuse himself from the Michael Brown case because his father had been killed in the line of duty as a police officer? Well, the vermin in the media don't seem to be asking any such questions about Ms. Marilyn Mosby because she has serious conflicts of interest, more so than McCulloch did. Her husband is an elected Baltimore City Councilman, Nick Mosby, in whose district much of the unrest occurred. And the fact of the matter is, uh, there's another connection that shows a conflict of interest. Mosby is very closely tied to the Gray family's attorney, Bill Murphy, a close personal friend. And Bill Murphy gave her campaign donations when she ran for prosecutor. Bill Murphy, the lawyer for um, the Gray family, was even on her transition team after her election. Did you know any of this? Now, we know that Moresby is a politically ambitious woman. There's no question about it. She gave a speech appeasing the protesters. She said, to the youth of the city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment, your moment. Let's make sure we have peaceful discussions. As young people, our time is now. Are you listening? Was the arrest of Freddie Gray illegal? Mosby stated that the officer's arrest of Gray was illegal. But is that true? Because according to the AP, two days ago, here's a quote. Several legal experts say that because he was standing in a drug-infested area, Gray's decision to bolt on April 12th may have justified the decision by four bicycle-riding officers to pursue and detain him. He was a known drug dealer. He had been arrested many times for dealing drugs, possession of drugs, etc. Low-grade drug dealer, but a drug dealer nevertheless. And he ran from the police, so they arrested him. So were they justified in arresting him or not? Now, what about the seatbelts incident? I'll go into that. What's medical homicide? Do you know what medical homicide is? I'm going to explain all of this to you. But I want to tell you what I think happened. We're searching right now for the pictures of the officers. They appear all to be white. Uh, and, of course, the victim was black, which adds, to the, adds fuel to the fire being promulgated by the race hustlers like Al Sharpton and Barack Obama. That's number one. But what was done to this guy in the van is really the issue. And I'm going to say something that will probably engender a great deal of distemper in the United States of America amongst my audience. And you want to hear it? And here it is. First of all, the thin blue line is all that stands between us and the animals. It's that simple. It's not a racial statement. The animals can be white, black. They can be anything, you name it. The animals who prey on the ordinary citizen. The only thing that keeps them at bay are the wolfhounds in uniform with a badge and a gun. And if you want to make sure that the wolfhounds are defanged, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it and you'll make the wolves day. That's all I can say to you. Because if you want the wolves prowling in your safe white neighborhood, go ahead. Keep defanging the wolfhounds because that's what you're going to have. Now, having said that, I'm going to give you the Solomon-esque view of what I personally believe may have happened, and it's only a guess. Here's what I think happened. They arrested him, whether rightly or wrongly. That's number one. Probable cause, yes. If he was a known dealer and ran away, he probably threw the drugs and ran. So they, they knew who he was, and they put him in the van. He was also probably well known as a difficult case to the cops. Tough as nails, fought, spit, scratched, whatever. So they chained him up. Uh, handcuffed him into the van, and they didn't seatbelt him because they were going to take him on a joyride. My guess, my intuitive guess, knowing a little bit about inner city police and how they work to restrain people who are known to be violent and wild on the ride to the police station, is they shake him up in the van, lurch him around. They figure by taking the stuffing out of him on the way to the police station, he'll be more subdued when they have to take him out of that van and put him into the Huskow, the police station, the, the cell. In other words, arraign him. And uh, if he's full of energy, they're going to get bitten, they're going to get spit at, they're going to get kicked, they're going to get punched. So they take him on a little joyride and lurch him around, bang him up a bit, uh, and let the police van do the, uh, do the work for them. They didn't intentionally kill him. He inadvertently struck his head against the, uh, the bolt and died. That's my opinion of what happened. And the rest is going to be history. How you could ever prove or disprove what I said, I don't know. Nobody was in there. You know, you want to put 
body cameras on police, I go a step further, put cameras inside police vans. I'd like to see a camera inside the White House. You want to be, I want total transparency. I'd like a camera inside Al Sharpton's offices at the National Action Network. I'd like cameras inside Barack Obama's private offices. I'd like to know what he says when that street rat Al Sharpton and he conspired to bring down America. So I'd like to see cameras. I'd like to see a body camera on the president. I'd like to see a body camera on Al Sharpton as well. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. If you want to comment on any of this horrible situation, you can do so. Who would become a policeman after this other than a criminal? Who would go into this business other than a criminal? Why don't you just deputize the Crips and the Bloods in Baltimore, give them a badge and a gun, and turn them into the police? Then you'll have no crime at all. See, that's exactly where we're going here. These guys, some of them are very young men. Their lives are ruined forever. Think about what that means. Think about what this means to throw the book at these cops. Why all six of them? Why not just the van driver? Because state attorney Marilyn Mosby is a greedy, aggressive, ambitious, out of control state attorney who didn't do the right thing. That's my opinion. That's the opening of the show. The phone number is 855 407 282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800 B U Y C O I N. The findings of our comprehensive, thorough, an independent investigation coupled with the medical examiner's determination that Mr. Gray's death was a homicide, which we received today, has led us to believe that we have probable cause to file criminal charges. So, so now the rioters are justified for burning and robbing and looting and stealing toilet paper and uh, refrigerators, television sets. Okay, so here we are. There it is. We have a, an aggressive, greedy ambitious state attorney Marilyn Mosby who basically threw the cops to the wolves and the wolves are going wild in the streets now biblically we have to follow the law all of us do and one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not murder in my opinion and this there's, there's gonna be no way to prove this the only officer who had a scintilla of culpability in this guy's death were well, not the arresting officers this was an overreach on the part of State Attorney Marilyn Mosby because she wants to be as aggressive as she can be to make as much political hay as she can and get as much money for her good friend, the attorney for the Gray family, Bill Murphy, in my opinion, a close personal friend of hers. She never should have brought them all in on the charges. It should have been the guy driving the van who obviously did something wrong, lurched him in the car and uh, threw him around in the back if that's what actually happened. Uh, and I don't know how to prove or disprove that, by the way, but there's no reason to have charged all of the officers, none whatsoever other than political ambition. She's an ambitious political individual on the, orders, uh, on the order of Michelle Obama. If you care to chime in on this or any other topic, the phone number is 855-407-282. I believe I have done a judicious job in my presentation. I've told you both sides of the story from my point of view, not to appease you, not to show you how balanced I am, but this is what I actually believe happened. <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, you're probably going to take umbrage with something I said anyway. So let's begin in Detroit. WJR Rochelle, go ahead, please. You're on the uh, radio. Hi, Michael. I just wanted to let you know, first off, my husband and I um, appreciate your program. We don't always agree with you, but most of the time we do. Um, we have a conservative bent. But we don't affiliate with any party. We have three children. We're trying to raise them um, to obey the law. We live, quote unquote, in the ghetto. Um, so, and I'm going to state, state something my mother always told me, and that is there are geniuses in the ghetto that no one will ever know about um, because it's not, they don't have the same opportunities. Uh, I disagree with you. Excuse me. I've heard that crap all my life. I was born in a ghetto, and no one gave me a damn thing. I had to work for everything I had. No one gave me anything. So I don't want to hear that all of them are Einsteins running around with their pants under their behind. 
I'm not saying. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you laughed. Come on, you like reality. That's why you laughed. That's why you and your husband like me. Because I'm one of the few people in the radio business who speaks exactly what he thinks. And whether you agree with me or not, you know I hit I hit it out of the park just now. They're not all geniuses in the ghetto. And plenty of kids grow up in the ghetto who somehow rise up above it. You know that. Right, right. No, Michael, that's not what I'm saying, though. <laughs> but here's the point. You made two really important points. One... You made the point that you thought that this could be the, the, the beginning of nationalizing the police force and, and different, and you may have a point there. But here's the question. Always remember, and I want everybody to hear this, when they start, and this sounds off the cuff, but just let me get, give me a second to, to come back around to the point. When they started with abortion, when Margaret Sanger started that, it was to eliminate the lower strata, those um, who were not... That's right. Uh, Planned Parenthood is a eugenics organization aimed mainly at blacks. Exactly. So, right, so uh, we, agree, we agree on that. All liberals who are Planned Parenthood are fundamentally Nazi eugenicists. Exactly. So here's the thing, though. This is beginning, and let's just say everybody's saying, oh, he has to have done something wrong. Quite frankly, I have a son who's in college right now, and he's doing his best, but I might tell him, hey, if something seems suspicious, walk fast, regardless of who it is, because I don't know. He can't, he can't just trust everybody, even the police at this point, because he doesn't know if he's going to be unfairly characterized. Now, hold on a second. I, I didn't say anything. If I were a black and had a black son, I'd tell him to get away from any trouble there was and not stick his nose in it. Exactly. And here's the one thing. But I would say that to a white kid as well. I told my own son, if you see trouble, stay away from it. Don't stick your nose in it. So it's not a racial thing. It's not. It's really not. But here's the thing. You remember that famous uh, poem, they came after, you know, they came after. Yes. Wait, when they came for the communists, I didn't raise my voice because I was not a communist. When they came for the trade unionists, I did not raise my voice because I was not a trade unionist. When they came for the gypsies... Uh, I didn't raise my voice, but not a gypsy. When they came for me, there was no one left. That's Cardinal Niemöller, who eventually was arrested by the Nazis and thrown in a concentration camp. So what are you getting at? My point really quickly is, if this young man has done nothing, and they have, and this turns out to be... Oh, you know what? Your point is too important to, to drop you. I need this woman to stay on the line. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Or have their own experiences of injustice at the hands of police officers. Oh I urge you to channel the energy peacefully oh as boy. we prosecute this case. I have heard your calls for no justice, no peace. Oh However, boy. your peace is sincerely needed. All right, turn it off. So we know what she is. She's a rabble rouser. She's aggressive. She's ambitious. She wants to run for state office, federal, or wants to be a senator or a congresswoman. In her mind, she's going to be president because of this. And it's a shame because there is a dead guy. Let's say he was a drug dealer who was running from the police. Let's take that side of it. And there was probable cause to arrest him. And he fought with the police. They threw him in the van. And uh, whatever happened in the van, I don't know. The other guy in the van says he heard him banging his head on his own. It's point blank what he said. Then he says that he didn't do that. See, this guy Allen says, and they're trying to make it seem like I told him that. I made it like Freddie Gray did that to himself, Allen said. Why the F would he do that to himself? And um, this guy Allen was in the van because he allegedly stole a cigarette. You hear this from a store on North Avenue. And he was never charged. Instead, he was brought straight to the station. Allen said, I talked to Homicide. I told Homicide the same story. Now he says his story is being distorted and he fears for his life. So uh, Allen is saying there was no lurching in the van and that the guy was banging his head against the, the wall. You got to understand that there's a game being played by criminals in America right now. They know because of the ACLU. They know because of the rats at NYU, Columbia, Harvard, and all of the lowest forms of life law schools in America. Because of the low-life communist scum lawyers in America, the, the criminals have been taught how to get around the system. And the first thing that the criminals do is they say, oh, I need medical attention. Oh, I have a heart condition. So the cop is allegedly having to take them immediately to a hospital for medical care. This is what the rats with big glasses and curly hair have told criminals how to do. You can thank all the boys at Harvard, NYU, Columbia, and the other low-life schools of law 
for having empowered the criminals in this country. So don't think this came out of the blue. This guy knew the game. He was playing the game. He said, take me to the doctor. They didn't, so therefore they're facing, uh, the, the, I don't know what, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Why all of them? Why not just the driver? Tell me why. Now let's go back to Rochelle on WJR. Rochelle, please finish. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought what you were saying made sense. We were getting along. What would you like to say? I just wanted to um, just finish up with, like, to my knowledge, this young man didn't have any record. Now, usually they'll come out pretty quickly. With wait, 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 wait. No, you're wrong about that. He has a long rap sheet. Okay. You, so the- you, mean, Fred, wait, you mean Freddie Gray? Yeah, Freddie Gray. Just oh, no. He has a rap sheet that's as long as my arm, as I said at the beginning. It looks to me like with all of his possession of drugs, et cetera, he was a, a drug dealer. Okay, so hopefully, okay. He was a low-grade street dealer. He was not a big uh, dealer. In other words, he, didn't, he wasn't on the city council. He wasn't a congressman. Okay. He was actually one of the salesmen in the street. Right. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, though. Regardless, the, the death of him, okay, and the way they handled this situation, my concern is if, in fact, you are correct about them wanting to federalize the police force and do all these things, understand that what starts on a low level that gets where people get away with certain things goes and eventually uh, infects the entire society. And what my, my concern is is that the, the death of this young man was wrong, wrong, regardless of what he did on this earth, his death was wrong, and it's being tried in the courts, right? But, but if we just keep turning away from that and saying, well, he was a criminal anyway. No, I didn't ever said that. I said, even though he was a low-grade gr- drug dealer, he still died in custody. So that is a case. I didn't, I said it, I said right off the bat, it seems to me like a case, but I would, I would think the driver of the truck would be the only one who's uh, culpable here, not everyone else. But, but my question, though, is, if he was, everybody should be held accountable for not at least calling and saying, hey, Something's wrong with our prisoner, our driver. Well, wait, it's not everybody. The, the, do you know that the cops who arrested him were bicycle cops? Do you know that? Yeah. I mean, they're just bicycle cops. They're not like big thuggish, you know, dangerous beating type. Of, I mean, what do you mean everyone should? Why is she dragging everyone into this? Because you don't even have to be a police officer to know that someone is injured. And at least, like, if he had to have blood coming from his head at one of those stops, if he's if he had a nail go through his head, I mean, something had to alert someone that something was wrong. Yeah, but the arresting police were not in the van at that time, were they? Yeah, I think that, well, she can't, yeah, I think they were. No, they weren't. All six of them were not sitting in the van watching him bleed to death. They arrested right. him, and they put him in the van, and then they weren't there. She dragged them in because she's politically ambitious, in plain English, Rochelle. You have to understand that there are no innocent people here. Okay. You know that she's a political appointee. You know that she is a personal friend of the attorney for the guy who died, Bill Murphy. You know that Bill Murphy, the attorney for the deceased, gave her campaign donations when she ran for prosecutor. You know that Bill Murphy, the lawyer for the deceased, was even on her transition team after her election. I'll bet you didn't know any of that. But however you slice it, and here's my main point, I want the entire nation to be aware of this. Just because something happens, and it happens in the communities that seem like they're always in trouble, which living here, you'd have a different perspective, but I'm not even going to go into that. That's a whole other story for another oh, So what's your main point? I don't, what, everyone in the police department? Why not indict the whole, why not indict the whole police department? No, my main point is that we all better be aware that if... Well, why don't you, happens, Rochelle, would you like the Crips and Bloods to be the police in your neighborhood? You said you live in the ghetto. Would you like them to be the cops? No, but this is not my point because I have. And, and, and if something, if someone broke into your house, you're you're an educated woman, uh, you have a family, you live in the hood, you're trying to make a family a, a life for your family. If someone breaks into your house to uh, to hurt you, you call nine one one. Who would you like to have show up? One of those with the pants hanging under his behind, uh, with a bandana on his head, or a cop? Listen, I am not anti officer at all. In fact, I service them daily at my job. So that is not even a question. Wait, wait, please. This is a family show, Rochelle. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. But listen- <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I can't help it making a joke every once in a while. I think your main point is this, and tell me if I'm characterizing this correctly. You're saying just because he was a drug dealer, a low grade drug dealer, 
just because he's in a troubled neighborhood, just because he's a nobody, just because he has no connections, doesn't mean he doesn't have human rights. Isn't that what you're saying? Absolutely, and I'm afraid that it's going to get on it. When it happens in the suburbs, it'll get attention. And this is where I'm going with this. Let's just really look at this. If this is because... Oh, you're saying that's why you brought up Cardinal Niemöller, which is that because no one came to the aid of Freddie Gray, it could happen to anyone else. They could be arrested, let's say, in a white, lily white suburb uh, of Michigan, and let's say it's a domestic dispute, and the husband's a little drunk, and they throw him into a van. You say the same thing could happen to him. Isn't that what you're saying? I'm saying that, and when they call the National Guard out, Listen, you no longer have any rights, and this can happen to anybody. Well, you're jumping from one point to the other now. I think you made a very good point, and I want to thank you for staying with, uh, with us on this. I'm going to send you a free copy of my forthcoming novel, Countdown to Mecca. The time right now in the Savage Nation is 42 minutes after the hour. You know what happened. It's impossible to become an officer today in America unless you... Uh, I don't know. I don't know who would become a cop today. I have no idea why anybody would do this anymore. I don't know how you can do your job. I don't. I have no idea how this is going to play out other than you're going to get a certain stratum of society becoming police who are on the wrong side of the law. And that's going to be to the detriment of the entire nation. Now, when all of this started the other day, I played for you audio tapes of Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Eric Holder. Do you remember? Do you remember the speeches they've been giving for the last six years attacking the police? Do you remember that? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? They've been laying the groundwork for this day uh, for a very long period of time. This is not to say that what happened to him uh, was planned. I didn't say that. But they're the ones who laid the groundwork to federalize the police. And I've been saying this to you for several years. It's in my previous book, Stop the Coming Civil War. I saw all of this. And the, the fact of the matter is they also want to disarm the police, as in England, so that only the criminals will have guns. And you have a low-life street rat like Al Sharpton, one of the worst people in the history of America. One of the worst. If you go back to George Washington, you could never see anyone on the order of an Al Sharpton, a demagogue, a race baiter, a hater, a liar, a tax evader, in my opinion. Now he wants the federal government to take over the police. Listen to Listen to the evil Sharpton. By the way, again, I'll say it. No one else in the business dare say it. Why do you dignify this man by calling him reverend? I killed myself to get a PhD, and I am Dr. Savage. I earned it from a great university after two master's degrees. So far as I know, he got his reverend's degree in a Cracker Jack box in Brooklyn. Listen. We need the Justice Department to step in and take over police in this country. In the 20th century, they had to fight states' rights. And to get the right to vote, we got to fight states' rights in terms of closing down police cases. Police must be held accountable. I don't think all police are bad. I don't even think most. I think that Al Sharpton should be held, be held accountable. I think the state attorney general in New York, who is not a good person, should have arrested him a long time ago for the crimes he's committed. Uh, I'll give you one example. Listen to who you're listening to. Al Sharpton, the man who, uh, with Tawana Brawley, made up a case about Tawana Brawley. Remember that? Remember Tawana Brawley accused Detective Pagonis of smearing her with feces and raping her? And Al Sharpton was out in the street with her with a bullhorn? That is who your president has in and out of the White House? Let me put it in context for you. Make believe a super conservative person had won the presidency, and he's now in his second term. And in and out of the White House comes the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan on a regular basis. Do you think all those smart boys and girls in the media might have noticed somebody in white sheets going in and out of the White House? Well, that is the equivalent of Al Sharpton going in and out of the White House on the other side of the aisle. That's my position. That's how I see this. It does not mean, and I want to go back to my main point, it does not mean that this man should have died in custody. He did die in custody. Did he do it to himself? I don't know. The uh, other prisoner said, the other guy in the van said he seemed to be banging his head against the wall himself. How are you ever going to prove that? Maybe the guy knew the racket. Let's take the other side of it. Maybe Freddie Gray knew the game, and if he beat himself up a little in the van, he could then make them stop and take him to a hospital. Do you understand? And get a nice juicy case out of it. Why, that's not possible? We never heard of that? Of people screaming police brutality every time they go near them? 
You think they don't know the game because of your friends with a law degree, the lowest scum on the earth? These lawyers who constantly go after the cops? Al Sharpton made a living attacking the police. His filthy lawyer made hundreds of millions of dollars attacking the New York Police Department. Has a big art collection. Big art collection in New York. His lawyer, who himself is now accused of rape, by the way, the lawyer for Al Sharpton. You saw that weasel, didn't you, a few months ago? So don't tell me there's not, not a big business in attacking police departments. There are some low-life criminals in San Francisco who have made a living doing this for the last 30 years. So I'll ask you this. If you want to jump on the bandwagon and hate the police, the next time someone's threatening you or your family, trying to break into your house, and you have a few seconds to decide, what do you dial, 911 or ACLU? Think about it, idiot. Think about it, moron, before you bring it all down, girl. Now, if you want to talk about this, go ahead. She has an agenda. Her agenda is to run for higher office. Her agenda is to run for political office. She is a naked, aggressive, ambitious politician. And she is using the police to get where she wants to go. 855-407-282. Rick, on KCMO in Kansas City, go ahead and make your, make your point. Well, I'm a 30-year experienced police officer that's now retired in Penn City, Missouri area. And I have a different, slightly different theory of what could happen, Doctor, if you'd like to hear it. I would love to hear it. Please finish the turkey sandwich so I can enjoy mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, go on. It's okay. <laughs> um, well, they were bicycle cops. So I'm going to, and, and it really, we can look at it both ways. Bicycles are traveling to chase this man down with officers on them, or there are officers on foot chasing him or both. And when you tackle a guy, usually you grab him around the neck just out of instinct. And I would imagine the police officers on the bicycles would do the same thing. Now, when you come off your bicycle or you're running at full speed and you bring a person down, a neck can be twisted to such an extent that it breaks. But hmm. if the person doesn't have any ill effects right then, and then he could have been put in the truck. The, I want to call it a paddy wagon, but that's probably in Right. I was going to call it a paddy wagon, but that refers to, to, to my Irish friends, so I can't do it. We have a lot of Irish cops around here. And you know, it's funny. You know, that's the derivation of the word paddy wagon. Most people don't know that. Right. It was it was used in in the early days of New York's police work because they were arresting a lot of Irish. So they were arresting the Patties. <laughs> That's where it came. Hold on, this is a great call. You are a former officer. You have a theory they could have broken his neck taking him down. Very important that Rick stays with us on on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. I'm Dante Allen. I am the one that was in the van with Freddie Gray. All it did was go straight to the station, but I heard a little banging that was like he was banging his head. And they trying to make it seem like I told them that, you know what I mean, that Freddie Gray did that to himself. Why the f when he do that to himself, I taught the homicide. I told homicide the same story. The only reason I'm doing this because they put my name in a bad state. Okay, Patty Wagon. Remember I told you where I thought the word derived from? And it actually, according to one source, came from the New York draft riots of 1863 during the Civil War. At that time, the Irish were the poorest people in New York. And you don't know this, but when the draft was implemented... Wealthier people could buy out of the draft by paying for a waiver. So the Irish, who were poor, rioted, and the term paddy wagon was coined. Arrest those damn patties. You understand where the word paddy wagon came from? Just a little side note. You can call it a van, prisoner van, a wagon, paddy wagon. But I thought you'd want to know where it came from. When we come back, more on what happened to Freddie Gray and why is this aggressive prosecutor throwing the book at so many cops right here on the savage nation join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage warning 
The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is absolutely vital that the truth comes out on uh, what happened uh, to Mr. Freddie Gray. And uh, it is my practice not to comment on the legal processes involved. Uh, That would not be appropriate. Uh, But I can tell you that uh, justice needs to be served. When I was 11 years old, that horn got to me. I got to tell you, it changed my whole life. The world goes around and around and around. During the Civil War, it was the Irish who rioted over the Draft Act because most of the poor were drafted into the Civil War and most of the poor were Irish. And if you had money, you could buy your way out of the draft uh, through a waiver. So the Irish rioted, and that's where the derivation of the word paddy wagon originated, according to uh, some sources. America will survive. It will go on. It won't be the same. It will change. Everyone... I run into so many people who say I think it's over because Obama's flooding America with so many illegal aliens and this and that. I could get into that state of mind, but I don't believe it, actually. Things change. Nothing is constant. Delta is the symbol of all societies, and we're going through our Delta phase once again. It may not change the way we would like it to change, but America will survive. It will recover from this evil administration. The unfortunate part is that we elected another government, We elected a new Congress, and instead we got the same thing. We have cowards, we have backstabbers, grifters, just like the Democrats. They're in it only for the money. They're only to grease their own palms and grease the palms of their donors. That's what the Republican Party has become. So we, the people, are stuck with the situation. A city went up in smoke, and unfortunately now, an aggressive, politically oriented state attorney, Marilyn Mosby, indicts all of the officers involved in this guy's arrest, instead of, let's say, one or two, and give them their day in court. She, in other words, indicts the entire Baltimore Police Department to appease the mobs in her husband's district. And there are many elements to this case that you need to know. They're very important to know. She should have recused herself from the case. She is not objective. Mosby considers the Baltimore attorney for the Gray family, Bill Murphy, a close friend. This attorney for the dead man, gave her campaign donations when she ran for prosecutor. This attorney for the dead man was even on her transition team after her election. She is a political animal. She is a political animal who was looking to get ahead. And then we go back to the arrest itself. He's a known drug dealer, rap sheet as long as my arm. Did it justify him dying? Absolutely not. We're all entitled to human rights. We've said that before. Remember, he was arrested by four bicycle-riding cops to pursue and detain him, who have about the worst job in the world, which is to go after the low-grade troublemakers in American society. In essence, the people on the street like that have to pick up the, uh, the worst cases. And what about restraint with a seatbelt? Is that the entire case? That's all it is, failure to restrain with a seatbelt. She didn't give any evidence that they purposely wanted him dead. Why would she bring these these charges against the cops? She uh, went way overboard. She overreached. I don't think that the police will be charged. Uh, excuse me. I don't think these charges will hold up in a court of law. She did it strictly to politically grandstand. She presented no evidence of motivation to harm this man on purpose. In a manslaughter case, it generally requires someone be killed by the act of the defendant. A manslaughter charge requires that the act was either inherently dangerous or done with with a reckless disregard for human life and that the defendant should have known his or her conduct threatened life there was no evidence to this effect none whatsoever presented yet by Mosby so this is a political case from the beginning to the end and then they talk about medical homicide do you know what medical homicide is well Mosby the prosecutor or DA said Gray's death was deemed a homicide by the medical examiner What is that about? Well, according to Gregory Davis, president of the National Association of Medical Examiners, 
there are five specific classifications of death for medical examiners, and they are homicide, suicide, accident, natural, and undetermined. What does homicide mean? It means just uh, what it says, quote, that one person intentionally did something that led to the death of someone else. It doesn't mean the death was intentional, and it doesn't mean it was a crime. Now, maybe Moresby is right. My suspicion tells me she's just a political animal who overreached in order to advance her own uh, political career. At the end of the last hour, we had on the line a cop from Kansas City, Rick, who gave us his opinion. I think it's important we hear from him. Rick on KCMO, welcome back to the state, to the Savage Nation. So you were how many years in, in police work? Approximately 30 years, sir. All right, and you, you're obviously on the side of the police, but you said that in taking down, well, you put it in your own words. Okay, well, <clears throat> whether you're chasing the person on foot or chasing on the bicycle, you're running or bicycling as fast as you can. And then the suspect comes in close enough to you to where you can go ahead and tackle him. Well, the natural instinct to do is reach out and grab around the neck and then go down with him. So you're going to come off the bicycle or at the last second when chasing and you're so close to your suspect, you're going to lunge and grab him around the neck because that's the easiest place. Well, I mean, All right, so you're going to reach out as, you, as you're running and you get up to the suspect, you're going to throw your arm in an arm lock around the neck and take him down. Right, and not necessarily to choke him, but that's, that's the part that sticks out. I mean, we see this in football all the time, you know, and you take him down. Well, anything could happen accidentally going down with the person. I, the, the police officer's neck could have been broken or his back could have been snapped. Right, so in other words, you take a guy down, the neck could go one way, the body could go another, and you could snap the neck by accident. Because, you know, at, at the point you come off the bicycle or you leave your feet, at those last few seconds to grab your suspect, anything can happen. We don't know which way. And All right, so, so let's be clear about it. Let's say that they did break his neck by accident. Where does homicide enter the picture? How did the homicide come into the picture? No, why would this, why would this aggressive political animal, the prosecutor or DA, call it homicide and arrest six cops? That sounds crazy to me. Well, it does to me, too, because it, it seems to me that there hasn't been enough time to do a thorough investigation. Now, that's just my guess because I have no inside knowledge. I believe it's a lynch mob out to get the entire police department to appease the mobs in the street. Well, I'm not going to argue with you about that. All right. That's what I see. Thank you for calling. Stay on the line. I'm sending you a free copy of my forthcoming novel, a Countdown to Mecca. 855-407-282. You want to sound off on this? That's the number. You have your opinion? That's the number. WABC in New York. Susan, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's your opinion? Uh, yes, Mike. I do agree with you, and I agree with the caller that was just on with you. Um, I think it was all an accident. I believe there is overreaching by this uh, person in, uh, in Baltimore. And I think it is a lynch mob. I mean, they're looking to... It's terrible what's happening, uh, that uh, it's, it's white against black, black against white, and quite honestly, I feel... Well, that's what I, Obama and Holder and, uh, and the others laid the groundwork for for, for six and a half years now. And They've start, they, they, they created racial enmity in the country, unlike any I've seen in my lifetime. I never saw anything like this. That's their stock and trade. That is how communists work. Class warfare, race warfare, you name it. Now, that doesn't mean the guy is not dead. That doesn't mean he didn't die in a takedown or in a police van. But why would she indict six cops instead of one? Why would she do that? I believe it's what you said and what the other... I, I... It's a strict desire to run for higher office as sure as I'm sitting here. This woman should have been forced to recuse herself from the get-go. There are improprieties that have to be uh, brought out, and they're not. They're covering that up. And meanwhile, let's go back to all the rioting, as you said. Why is there burning down of buildings and robbing and looting? And what, what she just did was justify the mob's behavior. She just said to the wild, crazed youth, the criminals who did this, you were justified, we're on your side. 
In other words, there would have been a way to do this without telling them they were right. She actually went out of her way to say that they were right. Did you hear that part of her speech? Yeah. How about the time, uh, I think this week, she made a comment that those who wish to destroy, you have to give them a little space? No, no, no. That's a different one. That's the mayor. Okay. This, is now, this is now Baltimore State Attorney, the DA, Marilyn Mosby. This is a different one who basically is telling uh, those who rioted that they did the right thing. Listen to clip number six on the Savage Nation. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. Now she's there. You hear what she just said? Unbelievable. So you she said, you, wait, as young people, not your time has come. She said, as young people, our time has come. Our time is now. She's now joining with those who burnt the city to the ground. Right. Terrible. Oh, my goodness. What I mean, listen, I, I'm paid to listen and hear, and I'm paid to pick up on the subtleties of what people do and what they say. But I don't care who's listening to this show. Marilyn Mosby is a political animal. She did the wrong thing. She indicted too many cops. If uh, any cops should have been indicted at all, it should never have been on these charges. It should have been on, on one single charge and only one cop at most. And the fact of the matter is, is that the attorney for the dead man, Bill Murphy, is a close friend of hers and gave her campaign donations when she ran for prosecutor. He was even on her transition team. She's looking to get him a big payday. Thank right. you for the call. Unbelievable. You haven't heard that on any other show, have you yet? Well, you just heard it on The Savage Nation. This case stinks from the top to the bottom. She's a political animal. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment, your moment. Let's make sure we have peaceful discussions. As young people, our, our time is now, she said. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? She then goes on with the next chant of Al Sharpton and the street rats in clip seven. Listen. To those that are angry, hurt, or have their own experiences of injustice at the hands of police officers. Can you believe I urge this? you to channel the energy peacefully as mm -hmm. we prosecute this case. Mm -hmm. I've heard your calls for no justice, no peace. However, your peace is sincerely needed as I work to deliver justice on behalf of Freddie Gregg. Deliver justice? Did you hear what she just said? Deliver justice. Wow, that's a loaded statement. She didn't say seek justice, did she? She already knows what the, what the deliverance is going to be. She's a very, very political woman who's looking to run for higher office, and she should have been forced to re recuse herself. If I were the attorney defending these cops in, in, in a jurisdiction where they could get a fair case, this case would be thrown out almost immediately. Do you know that? I want you to reverse this. If you were an attorney representing an individual who was being railroaded like this, are you telling me as a lawyer you couldn't have this case thrown out? But in Baltimore, are you kidding? Listen, these cops can never get a fair trial in Baltimore. They have to be tried somewhere else. I would try them in North Dakota. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. A rush to judgment by a politically ambitious district attorney in order to quell the riots. I do not think she can convict. There's no due process here. You know, if you had seen any criminal in this country indicted so rapidly, do you think that a liberal attorney would not be screaming that it's not due process? And here she basically lynches six cops. Sure, she wants to stop the riots, but do you think she'll ever get a real conviction? It's all political motivation, period, end of story. Now, I want to play for you a sound that just came out from the police union lawyer Michael Davey, I want you to listen very carefully to what he has to say. In my 20 years uh, career as a law enforcement officer and 16 years as an attorney, I have never seen such a hurried rush to file criminal charges which I believe are driven by forces which are separate and apart from the application of law and the facts of this case as we know them. There it is. 
Now, he probably has an easier case to prove than she does, <laughs> incidentally. She's got a long way to go to prove that they intentionally um, put this man, excuse me, intentionally killed this man. I mean, she charged him with homicide. Do you have any idea what she's done here? Officer William Porter, involuntary manslaughter, 10 years. Second degree assault, 10 years. Lieutenant Brian Rice, involuntary manslaughter, 10 years. Two counts of secondary assault, 10 years each. Officer Edward Nero, two counts of secondary assault, 10 years. Officer Garrett Miller, two counts of secondary assault, 10 years. Sergeant Alicia D. White, involuntary manslaughter, 10 years. Second degree assault, 10 years. And other charges. I'm just reading the top two charges. A rush to judgment by a politically motivated, ambitious district attorney. No due process. It's a disgrace. This case is, uh, I think, going to go nowhere. In fact, it's liable to tear the city apart more so than we've already seen once they're not indicted. That's what's going to happen. They, she never should have overreached because she's raised the expectations of the, of the mobs in the street. The first thing I would do if I were the police union lawyer is point out that <clears throat> the attorney for the dead man is a close friend and he gave her large campaign donations when she ran for prosecutor. And that the attorney for the dead man was even on her transition team. End of story. The case is biased from the get-go. Moresby has soiled her own record. More to say on the, on the Savage Nation by you and myself when I return. Don't change that dial. You'll be very disappointed, I can guarantee you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. A law enforcement officer and 16 years as an attorney. I have never seen such a hurried rush to file criminal charges which I believe are driven by forces which are separate and apart from the application of law and the facts of this case as we know them. No officer injured Mr. Gray, caused harm to Mr. Gray, and they are truly saddened by his death. These officers did nothing wrong. As all of the facts surrounding this case come out in the appropriate forum, the officer's lack of wrongdoing will be made abundantly clear. Right, and this just came out from the Baltimore Sun. The Fraternal Order of Police has called on this prosecutor to recuse herself and defends the officers. Good for them. They're fighting back. They're not rolling over. They're not Republicans. They're not pansies like uh, Boehner and the rest with Obama. Listen what they had to say. A Fraternal Order of Police Lodge is asking Baltimore State Attorney Marilyn Moresby, that's the ambitious political appointee, to appoint a special prosecutor to the Freddie Gray investigation. Why? Because of her personal connection to the Gray family's attorney, William Billy Murphy Jr., and her marriage to a city councilman. Right from the get-go, she has no right to prosecute this case. The letter from Gene Ryan, president of Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 3, also states that none of the six cops involved in Gray's arrest and death were responsible for the 25-year-old West Baltimore man's death that spurred protests, including rioting and looting on Monday. This letter was released just minutes before the grandstanding by Moresby attacking the officers. Listen what the letter says. Not one of the officers involved in this tragic situation left home in the morning with the anticipation that someone with whom they interacted would not go home that night, the letter states. As tragic as the situation is, none of the officers involved are responsible for the death of Mr. Gray. Ryan requests that Moresby appoint a special independent prosecutor. Why? He says, I have very deep concerns about the many conflicts of interest presented by your office conducting an investigation in this case, the letter states. These conflicts include your personal and professional relations with Gray family attorney William Murphy, and the lead prosecutor's connections with members of the local media. You listening to this? Based on several nationally televised interviews, these reporters are likely to be witnesses in any potential litigation regarding this incident. The, 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 attorney, the attorney for the deceased, Murphy, supported her by donating $5,000 to her campaign and served on a transition committee, as I said to you earlier. Now, of course, she denies these charges, and she wants to be the one who prosecutes it, of course, the grandstand. But the letter goes on, and they say that there's a problem with Moresby's marriage to Baltimore City Councilman Nick Moresby. Here's what it says. 
<clears throat> Most importantly, it is clear that your husband's political future will be directly impacted, for better or worse, by the outcome of your investigation, the letter states. In order to avoid any appearance of impropriety or violation of the professional rules of professional responsibility, I ask that you appoint a special prosecutor to determine whether or not any charges should be filed. This was before she jumped on the bandwagon. You hear this? We recognize that there are many dimensions to this situation. Blah, blah, blah. And so now you know the rest of the stories. The rest of the story. But she jumped the gun. She rushed to judgment for her political ambitions. And there was no due process. My suspicion is that even if they are railroaded in Baltimore, it will be uh, appealed and thrown out. Their lives are ruined anyway. Uh, let me ask you something. If you're from Baltimore, do you feel safer today knowing that this ambitious district attorney, whatever they call her there, has now personally vindicated the rioters? Do you feel safer now? Or do you fear for your life now that this ambitious uh, political hack has done this to the police without any due process involved whatsoever. How could she have come to these conclusions so quickly? How? How could it, how could it have been done so quickly? Even the uh, FBI, when they investigated these other cases in Ferguson, took months to arrive at any conclusion. Do you know how many witnesses you have to call to get to a conclusion? Who were the witnesses? Where'd she come up with this from? She invented the whole thing out of whole cloth. I think she ought to be prosecuted, by the way, when this is over. Maybe someone ought to prosecute her for, for the injustice that she has done to the police department. Rush to judgment. WJR, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, I have yet to hear you point out to, um, that this has been going on ever since this country was born. Rush to judgment. Prosecutors with political aspirations. It's happened every day across the country. You well, hear about it I, I understand that, but not, but in this case, the whole country is watching. Right. This happens to be the one today. But Oh, yeah. I know that the prosecutors are very aggressive and, and uh, very often violate the law in order to grandstand. I get that. Well, it's nothing new. No, no. I, I understand very well what it is. Here in the county of Marin, where I reside part-time, there's a district attorney who's worse than her, in my opinion. It was a guy who defended himself after he was chased home by a guy in a car. The guy came in his garage and he shot his gun at him. The, the, the DA prosecuted the guy who defended himself. That's how crazy it is here in a liberal community. Thank you for the call. No, there's nothing new under the sun about ambitious district attorneys. No, no way. WBAP in Dallas, Texas, you're on the Savage Nation. Paul, fire away. What's your opinion? Oh, yes. Uh, have you... Um uh, first of all, thank you for taking my call. Uh, have you watched the or heard uh, the uh, uh, the play by Arthur Miller, The Crucible? Right, what's your point? I, I know you're saying it's like The Crucible. Tell us how it is like that, Paul. Okay. All right. To, uh, we like to think we're smarter these days, but today we're just like the Salem witch trials. And today the new witchcraft is racism. And you get a whole community spun up over that concept. Oh, yeah. Racism or homophobia or, or anti-immigrant or Islamophobia. Those are the new words. I get it. Yes. And uh, so uh, we as supposedly thinking we're smarter than we were back then, we're not. Right. The, the witches today are straight white males with crosses on their chest. Uh, you most, I would agree with you there yeah that, that's the new witch the, the new witch in america is a straight white male married with children who goes to church that's the new witch because the warlocks have taken over the country thanks for the call got it ksfo san francisco james you're up your opinion go ahead please hey michael i think the uh prosecutor or the um uh, lawyer there who charged them is totally out of bounds, and I can't even believe that they went ahead and let her speak after that letter. Yeah, well, they 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 sent the letter minutes before she process she she announced the charges. Well, it didn't it wouldn't have stopped her anyway. You know that she's an ambitious political animal, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And her husband is in the district where the riots occurred. That's number two. 
And the lawyer for the for the deceased man is one of her best friends who gave her five thousand dollars. So how how much dirtier does it get? Yeah, and what you did is you dissected what she said this morning in a way that really captivated me. Uh, you know, I heard what she said, but the way you put it, God, it's even scarier than I. What when you hear her talking to the mobs and saying she's one of them? Yes. Let's play clip six now. I want you to listen to this and tell me if this is these are the words of an objective prosecutor or a DA. Listen to the youth of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies yeah, that right. will develop structural and systemic changes for work. generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. Our time is now. So she joined the rioters just now. Yeah. She She's one of them, in other words. She sounds like a child, doesn't she? How she ever got through law school, I'll never understand. Michael, I feel so bad for those uh, police officers right oh, now. Oh, could you imagine their wives and children, what they're thinking? Their lives are ruined. No matter, Even when they're found innocent of all charges, which will happen, whether it's directly or on appeal, their lives are over. I, I have a problem. I would like to raise a fund I mean, for them, which I may have to do. I've done it before. No one knows this. Some of my listeners know it. I've come to the aid of falsely accused soldiers. I've come to the aid of falsely accused police. I think we should start a fund to raise money for their defense and get the best defense attorneys in America to, uh, to, uh, to get, them, uh, or get these charges taken away from them. That would be wonderful, Michael. Hey, the, uh, the six that were charged... I am afraid that they're going to look at that and say, well, at least one is going to stick on one of them. And if they don't get one, at least one, uh, you know, uh, to stick on the charge, could you imagine the riots that were? Oh, you mean, the, you mean her friends will burn the city down? The ones who she said has young people, our time is now? Yeah, it might the, be. The gang members and the young communists who came in from, uh, from New York to, to burn the city down? Did any of them get indicted along with the cops? Did any of the Austins who burned down the senior center get indicted by this ambitious uh, district attorney? I know. Did any of those who, who broke into the CVS and burnt it to the ground, have they been indicted by this ambitious district attorney? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, it's a shame that uh, they're not looking at that. It's just all pointing to the officers. And I think that he did inflict the, the wounds on himself as well. well that, see, that part, I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. I know he's dead. It could have been in the takedown. It could have been in the van. But there was no intent to commit homicide here, anywhere. I, I agree with you. It does, if, if it, by, to, by this woman's definition of manslaughter, it means no cop can ever arrest a, a, a criminal ever again. Because any cop who takes down any criminal after this could fear that he'll be arrested for manslaughter. In a, how is he supposed to arrest a criminal? Asking him to come with him? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Johnson, will you please step this way and step into the handcuffs? Is that what they expect a cop to do? You know, my heart goes out to all the police. I, I have police in my family. I, I don't know how they can do their job. I don't know how in the world anyone can take this job on. I don't know who's going to take this job after this. I don't know. And I want to thank you for calling. Stay on the line. My uh, new novel's coming out, Countdown to Mecca. And uh, I'll be talking more about it next week, the week before publication. And you're going to see what I have to say about Islamic terrorism and what they're planning to do to this world. And uh, by the way, one other side note. You want to hear who the luckiest people on earth are? Bill and Hillary Clinton. Right after the uranium scandal blew up in her face, rightly so, the thievery, the outright crookedness of these people, what happened? An earthquake in the Himalayas. What happened after that? The riots in Baltimore. Everyone's forgotten Hillary Clinton's scandals, didn't they? Right? How did this happen? Now, she didn't orchestrate the earthquake and the riots. I understand that. She's just a very lucky person. You know, some people are born with a lucky star over their head. These two are the luckiest people on the planet. All right, my friends, if you want to sound off for the remaining minutes of this hour or next hour, unfortunately, the show is sold out, but there are so many people with so many good things to say. We'll have all the latest sound and breaking news on the Freddie Gray case right here on The Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Lieutenant Rice and all of the officers are deeply affected by Mr. Gray's passing and that his injuries did not occur as a result of any action or inaction on the part of these officers. It is our intention to try this case in the courtroom and not the media. These statements have been made in an effort to protect all of the officers from undue prejudicial effect of publicity surrounding this case. We believe that these officers will be vindicated as they have done nothing wrong. He's 100% right. Fraternal Order of Police, they're fighting back against this ambitious, vicious uh, political DA. She rushed to judgment, no due process afforded the police, ruined their lives in order to calm down the mobs and move up uh, politically. There's no question in my mind. Now, does that mean that the guy should have died? No, no one's saying he should have died. No one said that, uh, <clears throat> that he didn't die. But just because a man dies in custody doesn't mean someone killed him, by the way. This is a, uh, a distortion of the liberal viewpoint of police work. Marilyn Moresby is not objective. She's a political animal. And the attorney for the Gray family, that's the dead man, Bill Murphy, is a close personal friend. He gave her $5,000 for her campaign. He was on her transition team. Her husband, her husband <clears throat> is a councilman in a district where much of the rioting occurred. And that's Baltimore City Councilman Nick Moresby. The fact of the matter is, from the get-go, this prosecution stinks, and I would say she should be ashamed of herself, but she's in a long line of individuals along that line, including Barack Obama, Attorney General Holder, I would even say Al Sharpton. They're all one in the same in mentality. That's what they are. So listen to her again now in her appeasing of the rioters who burnt the city down in clip six. She becomes one of them in this statement. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies yeah, right, that will sure. develop structural and systemic she changes say the word. for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. See, she's one of the rioters. She said, I will seek justice on your behalf. Did you hear what she said? She didn't say justice in this case or on behalf of Mr. Gray. She said justice on your behalf, the rioters. Then she said, this is your moment. She's thanking them for burning the city to the ground. Then the phrase structural and systemic changes comes right out of the college crackpot uh, handbook. The college crackpot handbook of anti-Americanism has such phraseology as structural and systemic changes. Then she says, you're at the forefront of this cause. What cause? What cause was that? What is the cause she's talking about? If she says it's a cause, then she's already shown her bias. She shouldn't be talking about a cause. She'd be talking about a man's death. So the cause she's talking about indicates that she's a biased political animal. She rushed to judgment. She ruined the lives of six police officers. She made the lives of everyone in Baltimore less safe. And she has vindicated... The mobsters who burnt the city to the ground. The only one who wins here are them. More about it on the Savage Nation in the coming hour. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language. Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Oh, if only we could start it over again. How'd you like to turn the clock back to 2007? Before this gangster took over America and wrecked everything. Welcome to the program. Did I attract your attention? 
You think it has nothing to do with the community organizer in the White House? You think it has nothing to do with the race war he started? You think it has nothing to do with what they've been doing to police from the get-go? You think it has nothing to do with that? I disagree with you. This case, as we see it, is a tragedy all around. I say we, I'm using the imperial we, meaning me. Me, myself, and I. This prosecutor is a political animal who herself should be prosecuted for her rush to judgment and violating the due process of these police. In any other city of America, this never would have happened. But it happened there because we have a situation that is ripe for it. She identifies with the rioters. In her own speech today to the rioters, she said she's one of them. And she then says to all of those who are out there that she heard their calls for no justice and no peace. And she says, I will work to deliver justice. Deliver justice? She means seek justice, doesn't she? She means railroad the cops is what she means. This woman doesn't have the intellect for this job. She was strictly put in there as a stooge of the gangs in Baltimore, in my opinion, who are now running the city, as witnessed by what happened over the last few days. They rushed the judgment on the cops. Have any of the rioters or looters or fire starters been indicted as quickly? Answer, no. But she rushed the judgment. She attacked them. Huge charges ruined their lives. No cop in America now is safe. Every criminal in America is now safe to ply his trade. Every shoplifter onto a murderer can now claim that they're being unfairly treated by the police. What do you want the police to do? Go up and say, would you please put your hands in the handcuffs after raping someone? Is that what you like them to do? If someone robs something, they're allowed to, excuse me, sir, may I have, uh, may, may you please put your hands in the handcuffs? What do you think is going to happen now? You think the police are going to do their job? Not really. It'll be like San Francisco's police. Once the finest police, amongst the finest police forces in the city, they've been deballed to the point where they only go after the most horrendous and obvious cases. Otherwise, you can't find them. They're nowhere to be seen. Do you blame them? If a cop in San Francisco does his job, they're crucified immediately by the vermin who run the city. If a cop in San Francisco does his job, they're considered guilty before the criminal is considered guilty in this twisted sister of a city that I live in. So it's no different than Baltimore, but it's only maybe a little worse. So today we're talking about the charges against six officers in the Freddie Gray trial. There's no question in my mind that this woman should have recused herself. There should have been a special prosecutor. And it doesn't matter really where, where you fall down in this case, where you come down in this case. She's not objective. The attorney for the uh, dead man, Gray, Bill Murphy, as a close friend, gave her campaign donations of $5,000. He was excuse me, on her transition team. Her husband is a city councilman in the district in which much of the rioting occurred. There's no question that she has no right to try this case. And uh, we should talk about that. But let's begin with Baltimore State Attorney, which is a DA to you, Marilyn Mosby, coming right out of, fresh out of law school, like a typical liberal brainwashed anti-police, anti-American mouthpiece, a little parrot. We'll jump past the charges and go to clip six and you listen to the to the parrot rushing the judgment in, in six. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes yeah, yeah. for generations to come. Right. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. Structural and systemic changes. That, that's right out of the communist playbook that you're hearing out of Harvard and everywhere else where the communists have taken over the universities. And she wants changes for generations to come. Then she says to the mobs who burnt the city down, you're at the forefront of this cause? What cause is that? So she's telling them they did the right thing. Then she says, as young people, our time is now. Meaning she's one of them. She's one of the looters. She's identifying with the burning and the looting, is she not? Then she goes on to generalize now and further castigate the police before trial in, in 07. Listen. That are angry, hurt, or have their own experiences of injustice at the hands of police officers. 
I urge you to channel the energy peacefully oh, yeah, as right. we prosecute this case. Right. I've right. heard your calls for no justice, no peace. However, your peace is sincerely needed as I work to deliver justice on behalf of Freddie Gray. Deliver justice, not seek justice, but deliver it. Those of you who are into words understand how important the work is that I'm doing for you today. Uh, and I think you need to understand how not only how biased she is, but how stupid she is. She could hardly say the words because they were written for her, obviously, by the same group that works for Obama and Al Sharpton, in my estimation. She could hardly say the words structural and systemic. She stumbled on the words. I've heard them so many times before. They're out of the playbook of the crazy college playbook. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation across America. Karen, in Washington, D.C., on WMAL. Go ahead, please. You have your time in the sun on the Savage Nation. Good afternoon, Dr. Savage. I'm a Baltimore native. I was born and raised there. My father was a veteran of World War II and then spent 43 years in the Baltimore City Police Department. So I have a, a close view and, and I'm very... Um, aware of what's going on up there. My elderly parents still live there, and I worry about them. Um, I don't think the place is safer. But my point is, and, and you've touched on it, and it, it just brought to mind that these people that are running the city now, um, the, the mayor and now this district attorney, they have a win-win situation. Uh, the mayor, when she had the stand-down order, I, it made me sick to see those officers retreating while they were being thrown bottles and, and rocks and bricks. And, and by the way, they were also sent out there with they were also sent out there with body without body armor. By her, by the mayor. But but go on, make your, your bigger point. It broke, it broke my heart. But the win win then continues to these charges that are baseless right now and over the top. So from the first situation with the stand-down order, there's a lot of police officers that are going to say, the heck with this, and they're going to leave. And yes... They should leave. They, they should just abandon... Scary. They should aban They should abandon. They should take an early retirement. They should get out of Baltimore and let the gangs run the city. And then we'll see how this big mouth has... What the big mouth has to say in a few, in a few months or a few years when all the decent cops leave. Well, the mayor had just attended a conference up at, at the White House. She was one of three mayors... Um, and they were talking about federalizing the police force. Yes, of course. Well, that's what Obama's wanted from the get-go. Do you remember his clip that everyone forgets from the, from the early days about the National Security Force? Did you, do you remember that one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, hold it. Hold it. I want you to... So I'm going to do something that's very important for you on the Savage Nation. We're going to play Obama on a national police force before he became president... And then the street rat, Al Sharpton, in uh, a, a cut from today. Listen to the two of them. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. We need the Justice Department to step in and take over police in this country. In the 20th century, they had to fight states' rights. And to get the right to vote, we got to fight states' rights in terms of closing down police cases. Police must be held accountable. I don't think all police are bad. I don't even think so most of them. You see the game here. The mayor of the city, the uh, Baltimore State Attorney, the DA, in, a, in essence, they're all in the, reading the same script given to them by somebody. Do you agree with me on that, Karen? Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought that. I listened to her live this morning. I was listening to a radio station out of Baltimore um, and heard her live, and I, I could not believe, and I, I could I was just tell by listening that she was reading a script. Yeah, she so read I a did. script, rushed to judgment, no due process. How could she have come to these conclusions in three days? Can you explain that to me? No, this was all Have you ever seen another case like this where such a case was brought in so short a period of time? It's impossible. Even Eric Holder's uh, federal case, attempted federal case in, in the case of Ferguson, do you remember how long it took for them to do due, due process? Do due, due diligence? Due, sorry. To conduct due diligence? Do you remember how many months it took? Uh, and, yeah, eventually, and eventually they could not bring charges against officer, off the officer Wilson and Ferguson? Because there were no charges to be brought. This one rushed to judgment. She made the whole thing up. 
And, and Dr. Savage, what will happen when that's shot down, then we're going to really see the rioting. Begin. Right. It's going to happen again. So she set it up so that the poor youth, her friends, are justified to burn baby burn again. Yes. It, it, it makes, it if makes, I lived in Baltimore, I'd sell my property and get out. It, it'll be hollowed out and look like Detroit after the corrupt mayor was finally arrested. My 90-year-old father to take, he's got license plate holders that say Baltimore City Retired Police. He is so proud of his service to the city during a time. He was there in 68 when they rioted after Martin Luther King was assassinated. And I remember my dad being gone for days and days on end. Karen, they have one motto there. It's called Burn Baby Burn. Now, Harm City. It's not Charm City anymore. Mm -hmm. just... Well, my heart goes out to you, Karen. Listen. All good people of Baltimore know what's coming, and they know the handwriting is on the wall. Karen, I'm sending you a free copy of my new novel, Countdown to Mecca. God bless you. Thank you. Stay on the line. WABC New York, Fausto, welcome to the program. Fire away. Hi, um, Dr. Savage. I'm a cop in uh, Newark, New Jersey. As our blood flows in the street... Remember this case. You keep changing your name, calling the show for years. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't take it right now. It's... I know he got dumped. WABC in New York. Joe, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Uh, hello, Dr. Savage. Uh, yeah, I'm a retired uh, police captain, actually, from uh, big city on the East Coast in New Jersey. Um, just an anecdotal, anecdotal story uh, regarding a job we had one time. Uh, we were in the fifth floor of a building. Uh, it was a five-story building, and the person we were trying to apprehend was on the fourth floor. Uh, long story short, while we were searching the apartment, I noticed the window that was open. Typically, we cover the building on the outside, uh, but there were no fire escapes. And the fact that he was on the fourth floor, I didn't think anyone even jumped out the window. Right. In this case, he decided to, uh, I looked up the windows, I saw it open, and I saw the subject getting up from hitting the ground. And so he's staggering to try to get away, and he's, walking around, and I yelled at my officers to go downstairs and try to grab them. Um, one of my officers ends up apprehending him, and in the course of this, uh, there's a struggle with uh, the subject. Gets him handcuffed, he brings him to the front. Now, I know this person has to be injured because I you know, basically witnessed him fall from the fourth floor window. Right. Um, he's staggering over, he's screaming about his back and everything. So I said, okay, listen, uncuff him, he's got to be injured. Uh, I go to the hospital, we take him to the hospital, check him later. He said uh, he had an end, up, ended up having a broken neck and a broken back. He was still, still able to fight uh, my officer. At oh, the sure. Oh, absolutely. Some of these, uh, some of these uh, uh, perps have superhuman strength. People don't know that. Correct. And, and this was early in the morning. I mean, this was 6 a.m. And he told, the subject told me, hey, I was trying to hang at the window until you guys left. And that's all I remember. So he slipped, you know, and he fell off. Oh, but Joe, the point of the story is, were your officers indicted for, the, for, for homicide? No, not at all. Now, now, I was on the scene, and obviously I knew the person had to be injured because it was a fourth floor fall. Now, if I hadn't been on the scene, I don't know if it could have gone a different way. Uh, because the, the subject did struggle and, uh, and put up a fight with my officer, they might have just handcuffed him and brought him to the jail and, and you know, not, nothing would have happened, but the, the subject sustained these injuries, and they might not have ever even known it had they not been taken to the hospital. Uh, the, the, the point being, you don't know oh, what... Wait, Joe, I want to ask you something. You, you know this case from the get-go. The Fraternal Order of Police is calling on a prosecutor to recuse herself. You know she rushed to judgment for political reasons. Do you actually think these charges are going to hold up? Uh, you never know, but... Uh, I, and it absolutely was a rush. I never saw anything like well, that. You know, I never saw a three-day uh, set of charges, a charge sheet in three days of you. Here's the thing. In Baltimore, the charges will hold up. Therefore, they cannot get a fair trial in Baltimore. Therefore, that case needs to be tried outside of Baltimore. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you don't know what and wouldn't a, And wouldn't a jury of their peers mean all white jurors? I'm sorry, say that again? Well, no, you say a jury of your peers. So who are the peers for white police officers? I see what you're saying, but, you know, it's got to be... I know, it doesn't, it doesn't apply in the case of white police officers. I get it. Unless they're handpicked by Al Sharpton and his goon squad, they're not going to be jurors. Stay in the line, Joe. I'll be right back on the Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Here's another scandal that just blew up. Are you ready for this one? You know, Bill Clinton and Chelsea are hiding in Africa. And... uh, Clinton donors are on the plane with them, a so-called safari. They're trying to raise money while doing good. Former President Bill Clinton and daughter Chelsea left early this week on a nine-day tour through Africa with a plane full of family foundation donors and supporters in tow, adding jet fuel to accusations that contributors are getting rewarded and courted for even more money. I'll make it very simple for you. Sean Davis, co-founder of conservative online magazine The Federalist, says this. If hopping on a private jet so you can go on safari with a bunch of rich celebrities now counts as charity work, then the Kardashian sisters should probably be eligible for sainthood. That's Bill Clinton. Hillary, of course, is the luckiest woman on earth. Not only did Mount Everest explode in the Himalayas, but Baltimore also exploded, wiping the uranium scandal from the front pages. You talk about luck, huh? When I come back, more on the latest news right here on the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Stunning rush to judgment, the miscarriage of justice. I've never seen anything like it in my life. There's no question that questions remain uh, about the Freddie Gray death. Let's start from that. But I've never in my lifetime seen a DA rush to judgment against cops as quickly as this in such a short period of time. There's no due process. She cannot successfully prosecute this case. She's way out of her league. She sounds like a child who was pushed to get ahead her entire life, first through college, then through law school. You can hear it in her speech. She's a child. And this child is not going to get away with this rush to judgment. I can guarantee you as I sit here, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll make a bet on this show right now that even if her false charges are upheld in Baltimore with a kangaroo court, it will be thrown out on appeal. And at that time, all the damage will have been done. And once it is thrown out on appeal, the same mob that she is now identifying with as her new friends will riot again and burn the city down again. Again, she said to them, she's one of them. In clip six, listen to it carefully. To the youth of this city, I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. She could hardly read the speech written for her by someone. Structural and systemic. She didn't know what she was saying. The big lawyer there, systemic. She didn't know what the word was. Structural and systemic uh, changes. You're at the forefront of this cause. How could it be a cause? It's supposed to be justice she's seeking, isn't it? But no, it's a cause. So on the from the get go, if I were a lawyer for these cops, I would say this this uh, this prosecutor or DA says that this is a cause. This is not a trial. It's a cause for her, and she must be recused immediately. And then she further said that as young people, our time is now. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, she's identifying with the rioters and the looters and the burners. I'm sorry. The whole thing stinks to high heaven. This is not to justify the death of Freddie Gray with a rap sheet as long as my leg. The guy looks to me with all of these arrests, drug dealer on a low-level street drug dealer. Possession of a controlled dangerous substance, false statement to police officer, unlawful possession of a controlled substance, possession of a controlled substance, unlawful possession of a controlled substance. This is year after year after year. Controlled dangerous substance, possession of a controlled dangerous substance. The guy was a low-level street a, a drug dealer. Okay. And so the cops knew who he was. And there's no question that he was running because he threw the drugs away. How he got his neck broken is the question. So f- have a trial on that. But don't throw the book at six cops because you're a greedy, aggressive, political animal and you want a payday for your uh, a lawyer, for your friend who's a lawyer for them. 
it's it's awful. This is right out of a, a several different movies I've seen. Someone brought up the Salem witch trials using Arthur uh, Miller's play, The Crucible, about the Salem witch trials. The witches today are the police. And uh, now they're being charged in advance of a case. They're being made into the into the new the new devils. And it was all because of Obama's attacks on police for the last six, seven years, six years, however long this regime has been in power. From the get-go, they've been attacking the police. Him, Holder, the street rat Al Sharpton, attacking police, vilifying the police, making all police white devils. It's been going on and on and on until finally they finally have what they've wanted. And so they throw the book at these six cops without any evidence whatsoever that they did the, uh, the that they intentionally uh, com- committed a second degree depraved heart murder, involuntary manslaughter, second degree assault. What do you mean second degree assault? They didn't assault the guy, they arrested him. Involuntary manslaughter. So this means now the drug dealers are free to ply their trade in Baltimore. The, the big The big winners here are the street level drug dealers. This is a victory for the drug peddlers in Baltimore and around America. This means that cops across America will no longer arrest drug peddlers for fear that it'll be another Freddie Gray. So drug dealing is now rampant in America. In essence, Obama, through his stooge, whatever her name is, uh, whatever her name, I don't remember her name, Baltimore State Attorney Marilyn Mosby, uh, this stooge has now j- done the work that drug dealers have been wanting to be done for, for, for decades. It's now wonderful for a drug dealer. Uh, their stock just went up. In fact, if there was a uh, stock, DDI, Drug Dealers Incorporated, I would invest in it today because the, because their business is going to boom. DDI, I'd, I'd put money into DDI. I'd invest ten grand in DDI right now because this stock's going to boom. If you were a cop, would you arrest a low-grade drug dealer? Would you? Would you dare try it? They know the game. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, I need medical help. Oh, take me to the hospital. Oh, the police abused me. Yep, KFAY Radio. Amy, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Dr. Savage. Basically, I just wanted to bring to your attention the fact that Hillary Clinton just not even a week ago had a speech about how she was advocating for women's rights and how, you know, her mom and her grandparents had fought. And, and ha- she said the words, it's our time for women. I oh. see a correlation with what the Baltimore DA said. And um, she basically said the same type of thing. It's your moment. It's our time. Our time is now. Uh, it's coming out of It's coming out of central casting. In other words, all these speeches from the uh, uh, illiberal Democrat machine. Well, you know, you never want to waste a crisis, right? <laughs> well, this is not, you know, you're right, but it's not a laughing matter. Six, six lives are ruined now. It's a nervous laughter. I'm, I'm scared to death. I'm 37. I have three kids. It scares me what kind of country uh, my kids have. Well, this is what you get when you have a lawless president. I said that on Monday. I'll go right back to my notes because I still have them. And, and I have them right here. Please bear with me. Law and order. And I said, with a lawless president, what did you expect to happen? With a lawless attorney general, a lawless Democrat party, a party that makes up laws and disregards others, what do you expect to happen? What do you expect to happen? The city burned because of them. The cops were were basically uh, told to stand down. They had no body armor. They were intimidated by Holder's FBI, who said they were monitoring the situation, meaning watching that the police didn't do their job. And so the fact of the matter is... Uh, the police are now the victims. Police are now the victims. So, so we, we've got a very bad situation on our, our hands right now. KSFO, San Francisco, Lewis, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Hey, thanks, Doc. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, um, the attorney that gave the, um, the, the prosecutor in this case, he was on a TV show. HBO did a series called The Wire. It took place in Baltimore. Showed mm-hmm. you basically, um, it showed you the drug trade, showed you how rampant it was, but it also got into the political side of things, how uh, people become mayors and, and, and everyone has a career and they're all trying to advance their career. And this is, it, I swear, Doc, right after The Sopranos, The Wires was one of the best shows on TV. 
I implore you to check it out. But he no, I, I've, I've watched the show, but what do you? What's the connection between the Wire and this? Oh, just it's it, it's almost straight out of the Wire. The way that she's taken this opportunity that uh, another young man died, and she's going to take this opportunity for self-aggrandizement. And like you said, and it, it, she sounds like she's got political ambitions. She, oh, she wants to be the congresswoman from Massachusetts, from uh, Maryland, or the God knows she could be a U.S. senator with this case. And, she, and, and this, this is how senators and congresspeople. This is how they're made. This is this is career. See, it doesn't matter to her whether they. She's she's not after justice, not by identifying with the protesters. She already biased the case sufficiently for any defender, any defense attorney for the cops to have this case uh, thrown out. There's no way they're going to be found guilty, according to what I see. No, you're 100% right, Doc, and, 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 I, and that's why... But I, see, it doesn't matter to her whether they're found guilty. What matters is that she has now put herself on a pedestal to the mobs in the streets of Baltimore. I think that's what you're saying. Absolutely not. She, She's and, now their hero. She is now their hero because she did to the cops what they've always wanted to do. And so it doesn't matter whether she wins or loses, she's already won. And I'm just, just as a young black man sitting here watching this unfold in front of my eyes, I have to shake my head because, again, we lose the thread of the conversation, the, the real issue that needs to be talked about. Again, just completely get skirted over because she's taking this opportunity to... I make herself look good. She right. Absolutely. She did it strictly for her own political future. Uh, however, it could backfire on her, by the way. Once it comes out that the attorney for the deceased is a personal friend, someone who gave her $5,000, someone who was on a transition committee, once it is shown that her bias is evident, I, I suspect this could backfire on her. She is so naive that her handlers think that they can move her up and further up the ladder because of this, they're liable to find out the opposite is true. Although in America, anything is possible. Look who became president. Take a look at who became president, so I wouldn't look for justice in Baltimore. But don't you agree with me that the trial will have to be moved out of Baltimore to be fair to the police? How can they get a fair trial in Baltimore when there's a lynch mob? How are they ever going to get a fair trial? And it has to be moved out of, out of Baltimore, probably to another state altogether. And uh, this woman herself, in my opinion, should be disbarred for what she's just done. But good, good luck doing it in Baltimore, Maryland. She indicted the entire police force. She did it in three or four days, which unto itself is ridiculous. Miscarriage of justice, rush to judgment, okay? How many different ways to Sunday do I have to tell you this whole case stinks to high heaven? And many questions remain about her after this charge sheet was brought against the officers. Their lives are ruined. Their families will have to leave the city. She destroyed police forever in Baltimore. And she did it strictly because she's an ambitious politician. And nothing more and nothing less than that. And that's one man's opinion, by the way. 855-400-7282. WDRC Radio, Brian Make your point. Fire away. Mike, I'm Michael, I'm enjoying your uh, analysis of the DA's comments, but I don't think you're taking, um, you're taking this far enough, your conclusion. These police officers probably won't go to trial for at least a year, probably a year and a couple of months. They want an acquittal. You know, we know that uh, Valerie Jarrett's been in contact with the uh, mayor of Baltimore. So what's going to happen if... They're acquitted around Labor Day of 2016 or October 2016. You're going to have Rodney King-esque riots throughout the country in the middle of a presidential election. In other words, once the officers are vindicated and the case is thrown out, the cities will burn again. Exactly. In the middle. And wait. So how does that how does that help uh, the Democrats? It'll help uh, drive up their vote. It'll make the uh, Republicans that are already cowards even more so and say, oh, yes, we have to nationalize uh, police procedures and this, that, or the other thing and give more power to a, a police state, a centralized government, which Obama will help. Well, I remain an eternal optimist. I think the opposite will happen, given the, the, the history of this situation in America. I believe that the white voter who has sat on the sidelines feeling that both parties are the same, should there be such 
civil disobedience or riots, whichever you want to call them, I believe that the tens of millions of whites who don't vote will come out and vote against the Democrat liberal machine once and for all. I think that could happen just as well. But I thank you for, um, you know, advancing the conversation to the 2016 election, Brian. And let me please send you a copy of my book, Countdown to Mecca, coming out in a week. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let me close by saying uh, that this was a very shockingly surprising announcement of charges against all the police. Because cases like this generally take months for an investigation to occur before any charges are brought, if at all. So there's no question in my mind that this was a rush to judgment by a politically ambitious district attorney who did not conduct due process for the police. And it's a very dangerous precedent for anybody, black or white, in this country. Eric in Kansas on KINA Radio. Eric, go ahead, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. Well... Brother Savage, I hear you, but this is the kind of judgment that's happening all the time in our community, and, and the only ones that get to wait for months and years of investigation is when it comes to the police. But, all right, you, may, you make a fair point, so let me ask you this. How about the fact that Marilyn Mosby is totally tied into the Gray family attorney? Don't you think that raises questions? No, because I'm sure... No, he gave her $5,000 for her campaign. But her being an attorney, how many other attorneys in that area paid to her campaign? She's a politician that ran for an office. She probably knows every politician in the city. That all right, all right. Well, that'll have to be looked into. But since it smacks of favoritism and steering a case to an attorney who contributed to her campaign, don't you think it would be better for your community to have a case tried by someone with less of a stench coming off of her? I, I don't see the stench. All I see is, first of all, what we're looking for... And, and you act, Come on, Eric, let's be clear. Do you actually think those six cops purposely killed him? I don't, I don't know that. I don't know if they did or didn't. I think no, come on. Look, you sound like a reasonable guy. You've got your grievances, and I get that. But do you really think six cops would purposely kill a guy like this in a van? Well, and I tell you what, I didn't, I didn't think that I'd ever see in 2014 or 2015 an officer just take six or seven shots at a man running away from him and blow him away. But I did. I see, I'm seeing it every day. And no, so, wait a minute. They, they didn't shoot this man. No one took a shot at him. He's a known drug peddler. He obviously was dealing drugs. They caught him. He threw the drugs away. No one's justifying his death, but... Why would you ruin the lives of six men on such a spurious case with such a biased district attorney, Eric? It's not good for your own community to have such a nakedly political district attorney rushing to judgment and lynching the cops. That's my opinion. But I repeat, look, not everyone's going to agree or disagree on this. Eric, thank you for listening so carefully. Unfortunately, I'm flat out of time. It's the Savage Nation. Thank you very much for listening. With God's will and your listenership, I shall return. Savage.